Hello, YouTube. This is a response to Tim's video about um, his Linux Mint 10 KDE installation. And uh, I recently got a Linux working on my computer again as well, so I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd update you guys on how this whole thing is set up, just for fun, I guess. I guess I'll follow the suit that he did, that you did, Tim, and uh, I'll just show you my drives. As soon as Windows decides to wake, there you go. Come on. Loading disk configuration information. And there we go. A lot like you, Tim, I got four drives in here. Four one terabyte hard drives. Two of them are Hitachi's, one of them's a Samsung Spinpoint F3, and the other is a Western Digital Caviar Black. So it's kind of a sleuth of random drives, similar to yours, in a way. I'd prefer to have all Samsungs or something. I'd prefer to have all Samsungs or all Hitachis. To be honest with you, I'm pretty envious of those two terabyte Hitachis. <laughs> but this is how it's set up. The first drive, it's a terabyte. It's one of the Hitachis. And it's Windows. It's just a Windows drive. This, the other disk right here is my Linux disk. So this is the root partition right there. It's 57 gigs. The swap is about four, four to five gigs, and the home partition is gigantic, <laughs> 870 gigabytes. And then the rest of the two are storage drives. There's the Samsung drive, and there's another one of the Hitachi drives. The one with Linux on it is the Western Digital Caviar Black. Now let's restart and just show you stuff. Show you some stuff. Restart. And also, this is my speaker setup. I have the Sansir 350A under my monitor here. And um, got a speaker there and a speaker there. Now, the white clashes horribly with the desk and all the other components, but these speakers sound awesome. Yes, I have a gigabyte board. I know, Tim, you're not a huge fan of those, but on the AMD side, they're a little crap. On the Intel side, they seem to be pretty damn stable, though, as far as uh, certain models go, including this one and the uh, G41M ES2L. Now, I have Arch Linux installed on here um, so that I can uh, use the AUR because the AUR has uh, just a sleuth of software in there that is just so convenient and pretty awesome. So, it looks like, it looks like Linux did, you know, 10 years ago. Random crap down your screen. There she goes. But I'm not one of those geeky people that uses nothing but command line because that would just be horribly inconvenient. Now, I built this up from a live CD of a distro called Archbang, where basically um, it's a live CD distribution of Arch Linux. Um, you burn a live CD, you stick it in your drive, and you boot into OpenBox. It uses an OpenBox desktop both in the live CD and in the installation. And what I decided to do was start with the base of that so I didn't have to configure stuff as much. I mean, in the installer, you do have to configure uh, some of the files, but Arch has, uh, Arch's wiki is really nice, so that's usually not a problem. You can just Google, like, uh, Grub Arch Linux, and it'll teach you how to set up Grub so that it boots, from both Windows and, boots both Windows and Linux. It gives you really detailed instructions, too, which is nice. But I decided to start with Archbang and just stick XFCE on top of that. So let's log in and take a look. And this same setup applies to pretty much all the other computers that I put Linux on. I just use this. Apart from the server, which runs Debian, which runs uh, Debian testing, because Debian's just Debian's uh, structure of an operating system is just awesome for that. Streamlined, easy to use on a server. But on a desktop, I like being cutting edge as far as software and the kernels go, especially on the board in this computer. It's a gigabyte, um, uh, wow, ES3G is the last uh, four letters of it. And this particular board is very stable as well. Very, very good board. I've had pretty good experiences with both gigabyte and ASUS as far as um, desktop boards go. Laptop boards, gigabyte is pretty crap. <laughs> but, um, yeah.
in this particular board is an ICH-10 chipset, which the Linux kernel was not very fond of. However, it the kernel took f just fine to the ICH-7 chipset in my other board. And this Arch install is running kernel 2.6.37, pretty up-to-date kernels, and it fixed a lot of the crap that was wrong with this thing that didn't allow me to use Linux on here. So, mainly for that reason I'm using Arch. Because the kernel stays very, very up to date on here. I mean, it's it's rolling release, so that's how it's going to act. But let's show you my desktop. And these are the reasons I use Arch. Not for any elitism or, or stupid shit like that. I use it because I get exactly what I want out of it. And that's totally awesome. As you can see, I stuck XFCE on top of here. And my Dropbox is almost full, apparently. <laughs> but here it is. It's just your... Average everyday XFCE 4.8 desktop. There's uh, the other hard drives. They just automatically mount because this thing still uses HAL as well as UDEV. And uh, I, so when this thing is default, this toolbar down here on this taskbar was up at the top. I decided to move that down to the bottom, similar to the Windows 98 sort of style of things and similar to KDE Classic menu and similar to putting the taskbar on the bottom with the GNOME menu as well. In fact, this looks a lot like the GNOME menu, the XFCE menu, if you look at that. Because you get all this stuff, you get the terminal emulator, you get the web browser buttons, and you get your basic menus of um, applications, which is really nice. And when you first uh, install it, you get the the vital, the uh, derp. The button is titled um, Applications Menu. I just took that out completely, so it's just a button, which I like a whole lot. And I also have a dock. The XFCE dock I decided to move to the side with a bunch of programs. And I just added programs I use all the time in here. There's Minecraft right there. It's just a ton. There's OpenShot, Kden Live, LibreOffice. In fact, this video is probably going to be edited with OpenShot once it's done. Uh, I'll just show you what I got installed on here. I guess basic similar tour to what Tim did with his machine. Um, it's got some leftover stuff from the open box install, like LX Terminal. They use LX Terminal for some reason. And also, they, they used Thunar with OpenBox with the Archbank. So Thunar was already there from the beginning. And what I also did is I installed, uh, I installed Dolphin as well, the KDE uh, uh, file manager, so that I could have access to Samba shares very uh, easily. And there you have Dolphin. You can just get to your. You can just go to network and get to your Samba shares extremely easily with that. So if I need to go do something with Samba, I use Dolphin instead of Thunar. Development. There's Qt stuff and OpenJDK stuff that I don't even use. There's the CMake stuff that's part of the base development package. As far as the games go, there's a ton in here. There's Hedge Wars and four in a row, five or more. All the GNOME games. A couple of Second Life viewers, and Prudence is mainly used for open sim. Minecraft, on the other hand, is um, just such a fun game. It's hard to describe until you watch a video or just play it. Mines, it's Minesweeper pretty much. Nexius is a first person shooter, which you see all over the place. Pain Town is similar to the 2D fighting games from back in the day, like Mortal Kombat and uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Phoenix is another Second Life viewer. Then there's the 2.0, which I like to keep up with just to see how it's doing. Urban Terror. Love Urban Terror. One of the best uh, FPSs ever. It's basically, they tried to make Counter-Strike out of Quake 3, and they got Urban Terror. As far as graphics go, it's whatever came with it. GIMP came with Open or with, with Arch Bang itself, so that's the way it happens. For multimedia, I've got Audacious, Audacity, K3B, Caden Live. Open Shot, VLC, XF Burn. XF Burn actually works pretty well in the new version of XFC. As far as network goes, I got Chromium as a browser, Dropbox, uh, LibreOffice, Writer Web, whatever that is. Like Pigeon for instant messaging, uh, Skype, TeamSpeak, XChat, the whole nine yards. And for the Office stuff, I have your typical LibreOffice stuff installed, but I also installed KOffice just to take a look at it. I can't I don't understand why they put Gene America under science. That's just bizarre. 
And then, of course, in my system tools, I don't have much in here. I have Compiz on this machine to reduce tearing of my NVIDIA video card, which is an, an 8800GT. Gnome Disk Utility came pre-installed with uh, Archbang. There's Dolphin. G-Parted. My nickname for it is G-Tarted. <laughs> and I also have Wireshark in here just to um, phone lol. And uh, I got Wireshark in there just to monitor a connection if someone, for example, tried to perform a den den denial of service attack on my modem, which has happened before. So I keep it in there for safekeeping and all that fun stuff. And the system is extremely fast, I have to say. Uh, Linux on this computer is very, very fast. This is a Pentium dual core running at 2.7 gigahertz, uh, 4 gigabytes of DDR2-800 RAM. So it's... The Pentium Dual Core, um, it's basically a Core 2 Duo uh, marketed with a different name. It's a Core 2 Duo with 2 megs of cache, basically, rather than newer ones where you get 3 megs or 6 megs of cache, which is, I aim to get a Core 2 Quad at some point because I really want a quad-core processor. But it doesn't use much, barely uses any memory. It's pretty nice. I'm absolutely loving being on Linux again. I really missed having that on my desktop and on uh, my other computers as well. It's just good to be using it again and awesome for it to be actually working this time, unlike last time. So, yeah, I just thought I'd give you guys a quick look, and uh, there you have it. Uh, have a good one, everybody. Ciao.